Next contraction. <laughs> the first labor is the most important one because it sets the stage for all the rest of them. If the first labor goes poorly or is traumatic or ends in a cesarean or ends in a lot of trauma to the woman's body, um, then the next birth changes because of that. So, for example, in the state of New Jersey, a woman cannot have a home birth if she's had a cesarean prior. So a lot of our clients who would be definitely interested in a home birth, the second baby would lose that opportunity should they have a cesarean. So there's a lot of energy directed on the midwife's part toward women having their first baby. First time moms are so excited. Um, just that there's going to, you know, their family is, they're going to have a family. They're going to become a unit rather than just a couple. I think one of the things that is always so exciting is helping people hear the heartbeat for the first time. And you know, it still will bring tears to my eyes. It's so benign. You don't really feel the baby. There's no real sign of a baby. And then you hear a heartbeat and your whole world changes. We are our most creative when we're under duress. We go back to tried and true things. So pregnancy is a good time to try things so that when you're in labor, they're very easy to grasp. My name is Britt Sando, and I am a Lamaze certified childbirth educator. Um, I teach childbirth classes here, and I'm also a DONA certified doula, um, which means I attend births as labor support. For first-time parents, attending childbirth class is useful for many reasons, I think. First of all, we have a cultural, like sort of a cultural legacy of being really scared of birth, of it looking like an emergency situation, of it seeming like a, a catastrophe in a way. And in reality, childbirth takes time and it's a process and it happens every day. So looking at it as a part of regular life, I think is one thing that childbirth class can, can do for couples who are expecting their first baby. Also just knowing what to expect from the process. Um, you know, the way labor usually goes and that it's usually normal um, and what that looks like. You know, that there's a rhythm to it, there's a pattern to it, and that there's nothing to be afraid of. Make sure that it's new or relatively not used used. I also think it's really nice to have a community of other parents who are in the same boat as you. Um, you know, just to be able to ask questions and laugh a little bit about the concerns that many people have having their first baby. Not going to squish your newborn. Um, he's a lot better. He's got good head control at this point. But in the newborn period, they do a lot of bobbleheading. You have the infant insert in the car seat. Still make sure those straps are tight. Bar across their nipple line. Any questions about car seats? I'm Madalie Haynes and I'm a first time mom. I was really surprised after I got pregnant about how quickly people can get funneled into the system um, of, well, when you're pregnant you go to a hospital and you see a doctor and, and they make all these decisions for you about what to do with your body and it seemed like counterintuitive to what childbirth really was about. So we looked up New Jersey midwives and um, this was the very first one um, on the web search to pop up and I, and I was just, the website was very nice and it, the midwives looked wonderful too and um, it seemed like a place that I really wanted to come to. The thing that stands out the most is that they spend time with you um, and they listen to your questions. Um, they take the whole picture into account so they look at your um, total well-being, um, your nutrition, your health, everything. I think the, I just feel like the midwife philosophy lines up so much better and is a much more relaxed approach um, to having a child, which is what you really need, I think, in labor. So. We are at the Star 99.1 uh, Family Festival today, and we advertise on Star 99.1, just giving facts about midwifery uh, that people can share with others. 
to enlighten them on what midwives are and what uh, better birth practices could and should be in New Jersey. And we are sharing our information with people here today as they walk by. We're giving away some little gift boxes for them, which is always nice to get a little something sweet. Uh, and we really enjoy sharing our passion with others. Today we're really hoping to share our message about midwifery and to advance the opinions that people have about midwives. We get asked a lot about, oh, is a midwife the same as a doula? <laughs> uh, do midwives only do home birth? So we want to just advance people's knowledge on what a midwife is and what they can be. Uh, what a certified nurse midwife is, that we deliver in the hospital, that we do VBACs, that we uh, have a larger scope of practice than maybe some people were previously aware of, and just spread our message about the care that pregnant women need in their pregnancies. What do you think of midwives? Great. Yeah? Why are they great? Because yeah. I was one. Yes, and you turned out really well, right? Yeah. 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 We have a lot of instructions for women in labor that are not necessarily talked about um, in their childbirth classes. You know, our childbirth classes are good and Britt teaches them specific to our practice and specific to the midwives, but there's still things I think that when we ask women to do it, they still hesitate. And, and I think because they don't know why. And so we spend a, a fair amount of time talking to them about the coping techniques that might help you tolerate labor pains um, it gives them just an idea that it actually might help. It actually might be worth doing. It's hard to practice labor, you know, so if you're going to run a marathon, you can practice. You, know, you can go running and you can run a little further today. So you can kind of get ready for this 26 mile run. And labor's hard to really get ready for. Nothing is really like it. We use an ice cube as a tool to mimic the concentration you have to put in during a contraction. So we put the ice cube in a hand and you have to use the same hand for every contraction we're doing and um, we, we time it so there's a minute worth of ice holding which a, a good working contraction is probably 60 seconds long and then we also do a rest period when you put the ice down. So we start with how you cope with just holding ice and all your concentration is on the ice and it hurts and it feels forever. And then we move on to um, just some talking through the contraction while you're holding the ice, but just any amount of simple um, soothing, relaxation kind of talk, even relaxation breathing, just gently in through your nose, out through your mouth, you're doing well, you know, you're almost finished, you can get through this contraction and then asking women, did that go better for you? And then moving on to really using techniques of position changes, massage, sitting on a birth ball, rocking in a chair, on your hands and knees, forward leaning, all the things, all the position changes that facilitate comfort during a contraction, and they're still holding their ice, and did they even feel the ice so much anymore? Was it really? going through some simple non-pharmacologic comfort measures, did they tolerate the contraction well? And almost everybody will say, I hardly noticed the ice. It was really so much better. Women that go to the hospital in a typical medical practice are not even met at the hospital by their care provider. You go in the bed, you get the fetal monitor on, you get an IV placed, and we wait and see how things go. So very soon, labor hurts more in the bed, so you get more pain medicine. Pain medicine can slow labor, so we get an epidural. We know first time moms especially are gonna push much more effectively and with more core power when they feel how and where and when they have to push their baby. And that's what we're looking for and trying to achieve. We, we really feel like our second stage is the pushing part of labor is more efficient, um, better pushing, and a shorter amount of time put into it if women are unmedicated. And truly, um, 
feeling the baby move down is a powerful sensation to women too. They feel the progress at that point and they feel the baby moving out and even work harder to make the birth happen. I got up in the middle of the night on July 3rd and I had this like menstrual like cramping, like it, it just kind of hurt a little bit. Um, it was something different. It wasn't incredibly painful. It was like kind of like mild cramps. Um, and I was thinking, well, I don't know if this is labor or not, but I'll go back to bed and we'll see what happens if this happens more often. Um, and I guess at that point, that was probably six in the afternoon, that's when my body just like started taking over. Cause I guess all through the day, it was just kind of practicing for the labor. Um, and then after that, it really took over. Um, the tub was all full of, of warm water um, and I was all set to push, uh, which I was really looking forward to because the contractions just got to their, to their peak and now it was like pushing was something that I could actually do to, to move the baby forward and out. And I went into the tub and it felt so great on my back and everything. I just, as soon as I sat in the tub, it cut the pain I would say at least in half, like it just felt really wonderful. Um, and that gave me the boost of energy I needed to get through the pushing phase. There was just one moment in the, in the labor process that I just felt like, I don't know if I can handle it. And I think I turned to Chrissy at one point and I was like, I was like, I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> and she, she turned to me and she's so calm and she's like, yeah, it does feel like that, but you can do it. And then like, and then I like kind of like turned and had like this change of mind and I was like, I can do it. And I got like really into it at that point. It was almost like a carnal, like animal like zone. And so I just, and I just really gave it my all, um, bearing down with like everything inside me. I wasn't able to catch the baby because I just, you know, I was just like so focused uh, on trying to get him out, I guess at that point. Um, but they caught him for me and um, they laid him on my chest. It was just like, I was just like relaxing from that and I was looking down at him and it was really surreal. Like it was, it was like I couldn't believe that this was my baby and that, I mean I knew during the pregnancy that I had a human inside me but to actually see him on my chest was just really amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, God. It's, it's okay. Oh my God. It's a miracle. It's, okay. it's just a miracle. You just made a miracle. Oh. Yeah, we made this together. Thank you so much, Tyler. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. Oh, you got no good. good. Um, and he was so peaceful. He was such a peaceful little guy, I remember. And he made this tiny little noise like, nah, like a, like a mewing kitten or something. So I would call him my little mew because uh, he was just so... I don't know, gentle. He was like a, a gentle giant, because he was a big baby too. For me, I, he was like eight pounds, nine ounces, and I had expected like around a seven pounder or so. And the, and the after process where we were just at home with the baby was wonderful too. Um, it was just really cozy, and I just felt like Atticus had such a, a smooth transition into this world um, where everything was very gentle for him. Um, and that made just a wonderful experience for the both of us. Do you have the grumpy face on? Oh, we have double chins like our daddy. <laughs> His dad had like four chins when he was a baby. <laughs> Women choosing midwives are choosing the kind of birth that hopefully helps them avoid a cesarean delivery. But it's so much more than that. We know we make better families because we help women become strong enough to trust themselves to do this labor and have the birth that they really want.